Oh, well, you know, let's talk about uh, what happened here on August 8th, uh, 2015. Basically, it was like involved Bernie Sanders, you know, the guy who ran for president and lost to Hillary. And, you know, in this city, Bernie was loved very much. And, you know, people were like saying that he, if he had won, we would have won the election. If he had won the Democratic nomination, we would have won the election and all this stuff. Well, you know, at that time, nobody knew it was really going to happen. But, you know, he got, uh, he came here to speak because there was a, an event involving Social Security. And while he was, before he even got on the stage, before he even got a hold of the mic, um, two Black Lives uh, Matter activists, jumped on the stage, uh, Mara Williford and uh, Marissa Johnson, and took the mic and, and started, you know, talking about, you know, the issues uh, involving, uh, you know, police brutality and white supremacy and all these things. And, you know, it's kind of a weird situation because you had like black progressives um, challenging white progressives and the white progressives were booing the black progressives and the whole business was ugly. Uh, nothing, you know. I mean, it was it was important in the sense that it did it did bring the awareness of Black Lives Matter to the to the national stage. But okay, uh, I don't want to get into all of that stuff because it gets, goes on and on. But this is where it happened. This is where it happened. But I want to show you something else because you know if you look over here between uh, over there in the distance uh, beyond this piece of ugly piece of um, public architecture or whatever it is. I don't know what that thing is. I don't even know what to call it. It's something. But if you look between that something, um, that ornament, uh, I, I don't know what it's doing. But anyway, the point is this. If you look between it, it's, that's called the Escala. And that's the Escala Tower. And if you've watched the movie uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, uh, you will know that that's where the billionaire, uh, the man who likes to you know, do rough sex and stuff like that, you know, who likes whips and the seek, you know, um, leather and whatever else keeps sex exciting for those who have too much money. Um, it happens in that building over there. Uh, uh, if, you, so if you come to Seattle and you want to know where it is, come to where Bernie Sanders uh, got confronted by Black Lives Matter and look through this piece of ugly whatever it is, and you'll see the gate to uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Hello, again. So, uh, over here, we have a very sad place in Seattle. Um, it is a spot where a tree sits alone. This tree is a redwood. And uh, the horrible thing is that, you know, people like think it's great that a tree gets to be all by itself and has all the light to itself and all these kinds of things, but it's not how it works. This is a desperately lonely tree. The lonely, I mean, imagine you being shut in a room, you know, um, for, for your entire life uh, and never seeing anybody who looks like you, right? What you see are other buildings and the Escala where the billionaire has sex. You know, this is what, this is horrible. And this is what it has to do and endure you know, for a very long time. I mean, it may not even live as long as it could live or could have lived if it was in where it should be, a forest with other trees of its kind. Its roots speak to nobody. Roots are really important for trees, not for getting nutrients, but for communicating with other trees. Okay, I'm getting wet out here because it's raining, so I want to get to my point. The tree man, uh, uh, the man who became famous on internet for like a day, uh, but for climbing this tree and getting to the top of it, um, this happened in, uh, I think it was like uh, March 22nd, 2016. So this is why we know this tree. In fact, the bartender inside here uh, next to me, where I'm going to go to in a second, he told me that uh, it is a famous tree, but it's a lonely tree. Uh, here we are at uh, the Century Link uh, Stadium. Um, here an incredible thing happened on January 18th, 2015. You won't believe this, but a black man, yes, a black man, stole a bike from a white cop and didn't get killed. It happened over here. The black man involved was uh, a football player named Michael Bennett. Um, yeah, he's in the Seahawks. 
and uh, they just won a uh, game, an important game, over the Green Bay Packers uh, in overtime, very emotional. And uh, after the victory, he took a bike from a police officer who was on the sidelines and rode it around the field. Um, that's what happened. So, you know, letting you know that it's not all bad between, you know, cops and, uh, and black people. <laughs> so, um, I want to show you something here, something much more significant than that. And this is not on the map thing. Sadly, I wish I could put it on the maps, but it's not. Uh, the Seattle map. What do you have here is the King Street Station and its tower, the King Street Station tower. You won't believe this, but this is a replica of a tower in uh, St. Matthew's Square in Venice. Yes, Italy, as in, you know, far away from here. So, you know, um, what happened is the, 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 the real building that this one imitates, right, is the one where Galileo, right, when he was showing the head of the town, the Doge, the, 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 the mayor, uh, uh, um, the, the telescope, right, and he wanted to show him the telescope, he, he, he showed him the moons of Jupiter. And this was an important event, like, because what happened is, you know, uh, Galileo saw that Jupiter was not just a thing by itself, but it had little uh, spheres orbiting it, moons going around it. And at that point, he realized that the world, the universe, was not about the Earth, right? The universe was not about going around the Earth. When he walked up to what is uh, the imitation, what, it, what the building that, that this, uh, uh, this tower imitates, which is where called the King Street Station, when he walked up to it, to the tower, he changed, he looked up into the sky with his telescope, with lenses from, from, from Holland, and he looked into, at Jupiter, and the entire understanding, the entire human understanding of the universe changed completely. And we saw that things go around big things, small things go around big things. And this meant that we may not be the center, but also a small thing going around a big thing. And this is a shift, not only in how you think about the world, but how you think about yourself. In a short, this is the decline of humankind. From this point on, things get very depressing. You can see that moment when he looks at the sky and sees Jupiter and the moons as the moment when we're heading towards Donald Trump. In a way, you can make this argument and it's completely satisfactory. But look at that. Whenever you see the tower, the tower that faces where the stadium where Michael Bennett survived uh, a, uh, a theft, um, then you can sort of put some cosmic picture uh, together in your mind, you know, some cosmic relationship, some cosmic echo, echoing across the city. Okay, this is a very uh, grim building. Uh, it looks kind of ordinary, uh, you know, nothing much going on, but this is where I want to tell you exactly which floor because I want to protect the privacy of those who live uh, in this particular apartment. But uh, Lynn Staley uh, of uh, Alice in Chains, the lead singer, this is uh, where he uh, died. Um, and it was, uh, he was, uh, it was after an overdose, his life left after he overdosed on heroin. And um, nobody knew he was dead for two weeks. And so um, life does not rest even when you're dead. Life works on everything. And so, um, in short, he decomposed for two weeks. Um, the whole apartment became an atmosphere of his death. Let's think about that. <laughs>